Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome to the final video of 2022. We did it, we made it, the year is over. Woohoo, what a big one. <laughs> I have had like three years this year and yee, oh my god, what a time. I moved out of my first flat, I got COVID, I went back home for the first time in two and a half years, I went to Australia, I traveled the US and went to six Stray Kids concerts, I came back to London, had to find a new place to live, had to help Kat get a visa, and then now the year is over. I have not had a moment to rest the entire year, like even on holiday, right? We didn't even have time to rest, we were getting on a plane every three days. <laughs> Enough about me! Welcome to my video! I'm going to do the same thing that I did at the end of last year, which is go through the posts from like Reddit and some TikToks and things that I saved throughout the year that I did not end up using in a video because I am so useless at like clearing things on my phone. I just like forget to delete things. So I have like 2,000 reddit posts? That's an exaggeration. I have like 900 reddit posts saved to my phone because I keep forgetting to delete them when I film videos. Um, so I have a bunch that I haven't used and I thought we'd look over them and do like a little like recap of the year, like a were the straights okay in 2022? What went on? Were conservatives good? The answer to those questions, as we all know, is a resounding absolutely not. But, and you know, I thought it would be fun to look at. So we're gonna do that. All right, buckle up. Let's recap the year through Reddit. <laughs> Before I get into it, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Jeff. Thank you so much for all of your support over all of this time. I appreciate you greatly. I hope that you enjoy this video. And if you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. So yeah, let's get into the video. I titled this album on my phone, What the Fuck 2022, and I feel like that's really, really valid. The student debt crisis solved. You took out a loan, pay it back. But I wanna buy a blue hair dye. Yeah, because did you know that blue hair dye costs the same as a student loan? Are you aware of that? Did you know that? Um, this hair dye here, cost the same as my university tuition. Did you know if you stop dyeing your hair, you could actually pay off your student loans? It's a really fun fact. Um, so there's my advice for you. Don't buy avocado toast and you can buy a house. Don't dye your hair and you can pay your university student loans back. You're welcome. It's good advice. So I just got a really nice gray sweater, but it accidentally changed color to purple after I put it into a washing machine. Is it still wearable for a boy or does it look gay? Well, considering that boys, men, are gay, <laughs> anything that looks gay is for men because men are gay. So gay things are for men, you know? Like, yeah, yes, <laughs> but like that aside, that like flawed logic, uh, dehumanization, misgendering of all queer men aside. It is a color. It's a color. Yes, anyone, straight men included, can wear colors. Also, this is like barely purple. This is like blue indigo. This, this is just dark blue, which as we all know, is a boy's color. The idea of going door to door to arrest and deport 20 million illegal aliens is ridiculous. We're going to go door to door to confiscate guns from 150 million law-abiding citizens. So I assume they posted this as like a gotcha moment of like, yeah, well, if it's, if it's ridiculous going door to door to kick out 20 million uh, people, like 20 million dollars is too many, then how are you expecting to do 150 million? That's preposterous and hypocritical. No, though, because one is ruining people's lives and deporting them for no good reason because immigration laws are ridiculous. And the other is saving lives by potentially uh, stopping, you know, 
shootings from happening. One is preventing murder, one is ruining lives. Like there is a massive difference there. You didn't really prove a point, ah. Uh, but good try, good try. You tried your best, you just didn't achieve anything, so. World's dumbest actress, Olivia Cook. It's interesting playing a character that's in a medieval time and how those things are still going on. Will someone explain to Ms. Cook, there is no Westeros, there is no Iron Throne, there is no House Hightower, there is no freaking medieval. It's a made up fantasy story in a made up fantasy time on a made up fantasy continent. This is, <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing for you. <laughs> medieval times were in fact very real. They just didn't have like dragons and shit. Like no Game of Thrones isn't real. But like, it's so like baffling to me that people can consume media and not realize that they're trying to like make commentary. They're not basing it off of anything in real life, any events that have happened, anything that's currently going on. It's so wild to me that people can just like watch things and never look further than just like surface level. Like, how are you doing that? That's like really impressive of you to do. Game of Thrones, no, is not a real story, obviously. However, it does draw inspiration from real life and real events and a lot of the time media has like social commentary and morals and messages you're meant to learn. That's literally what you learn in primary school. You read a book or you watch a movie in class and you come to the end and the teacher's like, okay, so what was the moral of the story? What message was it trying to convey? That's, that's a thing. M movies, TV shows, books, they all exist to tell a story, not just like, show boobs. I don't know. <laughs> it's like the people who fucking like watch Star Wars and don't think that it's a political commentary at all. Like how are we watching the same thing? Like people genuinely like watch like the Avengers and the Marvel movies and stuff and think that it's just a fun superhero movie with like no actual intention or commentary on society and values like at all, which is you aren't watching the movie properly. You aren't watching things <laughs> correctly. It's like, I once watched like Bojack Horseman with someone and they just like watched it as like a funny horse show. And I was like, how? Literally, how are you doing that? That's like a talent to take away the importance and the moral and the like depth, especially with Bojack freaking Horseman. How is how are you doing that? It's so impressive. Mind-boggling, honestly. Everything has a story and a meaning and is based on reality. Kind of like I'm rereading the Hunger Games at the moment because I just finished the prequel and like the conversation and the like storytelling and the morals are so so strong. The Hunger Games in the first like 20 page has anti-capitalism messaging and I, I love it. It's so good and this is what we were raised on, you know? <laughs> like this is what we read when we were teenagers and I love it. I love it so much but the fact that people like are able to take it and like turn it into a love story, the fact that that's how people were advertising it at the time is so funny to me because that's like exactly what the whole point of the book was to like comment on like how people only watch things skin deep and everyone focused on the li it's so funny anyway i've talked about this for way too long consume media better medieval times are real and it is a commentary on the fact that this stuff is like been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years like misogyny is still prevalent today and it has been that's like the point so good job for completely like just not understanding what you're watching. Good job. Proud of you. Love that for you. How dudes that drive electric cars like to be kissed. I'm not seeing a problem. <laughs> like if you are a man and you want to be pinned up against the wall, good for you. There's nothing wrong with that. Like it's so strange. Like who cares? And what has driving an electric car got to do with it? This reminds me of the post we were looking at a couple of videos back with like, men are less likely to carry reusable bags and are less likely to do things that are considered green out of fear of looking gay. Like, 
What? I will never understand. This, like, masculine insecurity is so astounding. Who cares if you like to be pinned up against the wall? Who cares if you drive an electric car? Who cares? Chill the fuck out. Sit down. We get it. You're insecure. Get over it. I'd rather see my son wearing this, and it is the KKK uniform, than see my daughter wearing this, and it is just lingerie. I understand that you might not want to see your daughter wearing lingerie because that might be slightly uncomfortable for you. However, I do think it's a million steps better than seeing your son join the KKK. Is this implying like just that you don't want to see your daughter being a hoe or sleeping around or doing sex work or whatever? Because like women wear lingerie like genuinely for themselves sometimes just to feel good about themselves. Like wearing lingerie doesn't necessarily mean you're in sex work or you're sleeping around or anything like that. A lot of people wear lingerie for their long-term partners. A lot of people wear it for themselves. And regardless, why do you care what your daughter does in her own time with her own body? She is a person, she is a human person who is capable of free thought and choice to do what she wants with her body and it has nothing to do with you and obsessing over your daughter's sex life is really creepy and gross and weird. Why do you care? She's not your property. You don't own her and don't be jealous of other men sleeping with your daughter because that's really gross and weird. Blah, blah, blah. Let your daughter do what she wants. Why does it matter to you? Why do you care? I will never understand this. The dads who are like, you can't have sex. No, girls, no sex. No. Why? Just, it's so, it's so baffling. And like, obviously you're just racist. <laughs> racist and misogynistic. Just also a question here is why couldn't you have just used daughter for both of them? Why does it have to be your son joining the KKK? If you have a daughter and no son, surely you could just use daughter for both of them. Why, why are you gendering this is my question. <laughs> why isn't it I'd rather my son be in the KKK than like hoeing around or my daughter in the KKK? Why, does it, why do you have to gender this? It's very strange. Are you just implying that like men are inherently more racist or like, there are so many things wrong. This is so insanely fucked up. Ugh, priorities, man. Oh my God. I hope you never have children. Postpartum tip for dads number 86. She went nine months without sushi. You can make it six weeks. Okay, see, so I like the message, right? I like the message because too many men like force themselves upon their like wives who have very recently given birth and it's really gross and awful and it makes my stomach turn and it makes me feel so uncomfortable and sad um but i know that that happens a lot so it's a good message i'm glad we're telling men to like just wait because like it's really not that fucking difficult your wife just like birthed a child and pushed a baby out of her vagina leave her alone Good message. I 1000% agree. I don't like the wording though. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's icky. I don't like referring to like vulvas, vaginas, whatever as sushi or fishy. It just is, it's just gross to me. Just say my, your wife just carried a human inside her and pushed it out of her body. You can fucking wait six weeks. Like you just need to say that. Calling it sushi is weird. It's really weird. Um, so that's my advice to you. Good message, good job. Don't like, I, please rephrase. My wife has breast cancer and I want a divorce, but I'm afraid to tell her. This is the hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. Both my wife and I are in our early thirties and have a two year old daughter. This February, we unfortunately found out that my wife has breast cancer. She's had a mastectomy, removal of her breast, and is still going through chemo, so she is bald. I always thought I loved my wife. She is the sweetest, kindest person I know, and she's done so much for me, but I'm just not attracted to her anymore. I know she knows because we haven't had sex in two months and I can see the pain in her eyes. I don't know whether I should make something up and say I've been wanting to get divorced for a while or just tell the truth. I also don't want my little girl growing up to hate me for this, but I'm sure her mother will tell her I'm a horrible person. Then again, I don't know if I wanna be in my daughter's life either. 
She might grow up to be unhealthy like her mother. And what guy wants to be tied to an unhealthy female? We aren't programmed that way by evolution, although I'll have no problem paying a reasonable amount of child support. My dear God, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> your wife has breast cancer and your biggest concern is that you're no longer attracted to her because she no longer has breasts and she's bald? So you want a divorce? The divorce rate of like cancer patients is so sad. It's so sad. Like there's studies that show that like the divorce rate doesn't go up when people have cancer. However, it is a leading cause of divorce when partners have cancer. Like it's not uncommon for men to leave their wives when they become sick. And that's so sad and so awful. The most interesting and upsetting and disturbing one actually is there is a spike in divorce when women have cervical cancer. So when they can't have sex, then the divorce rate goes up like drastically. That's really says a lot about priorities. Like I understand that sex can be an important part of a relationship, but like, dude, your wife has cancer. She has cancer, I promise it's way harder for her. And she kind of needs, you know, support and like love. Um, obviously you're not a great person. So like she deserves better anyway, but like, oh my God, that's insanely fucked up. And then to take it one step further and say you don't want your daughter in your life because she might get sick and you don't want to be tied to unhealthy females because it's not in your nature as a man. What, what is wrong with you? Oh my God, you're just a bad person. You're just a genuinely really bad person. And yeah, your wife will tell your daughter you're a bad person because you are. Leaving your daughter because your wife has... And then leaving your wife to be a single mother while she goes through cancer treatment to a two-year-old too. Just like the worst kind of thing you could do. You're just a horrible person. And I, I hope that you get your corruptions and I hope karma is a bitch. I don't want to say I hope you get sick and have no one because that feels like a little harsh, but I'm also not not going to say it. So this is a photo of a man with a sign that says homeless, hungry, anything helps. And a man standing next to him with like a Walmart hiring sign and someone captioned it. Please help me with anything you can, but don't ever force me to actually work. And this is just kind of ridiculous because you realize you have to like apply for a job and go through an interview process and then actually get hired, right? You can't just go up to a man with a sign and be like, I'll take it. And they hire you on the spot. I don't know this man's situation. I don't know what's going on, but I know that homeless people have a really hard time finding a job because, you know, they can't really keep in good hygiene a lot of the time because they don't really have the place to be able to do that. And a lot of companies don't like that. Sometimes they don't have the best mental health. A lot of homeless people have like PTSD or schizophrenia and a lot of companies don't like that. There's a lot of reasons and a lot of homeless people struggle to find jobs regardless of how many they apply for. It's not as easy as just seeing a person with the sign and then getting a job. Don't be dumb. Don't play stupid, you know that. And if you don't know that, welcome to the freaking real world, all right? It's not easy to get a job. It should be, this person shouldn't be in this condition. They shouldn't be in this like situation. They shouldn't be homeless at all. That shouldn't be a thing. There's plenty of housing to go around. It's not easy to get a job and you shouldn't have to have a job in order to just like have a house. In my opinion, shelter, food, water, electricity, and Wi-Fi should be just like basic rights. Wi-Fi is kind of needed in this day and age. You can't really do much without it. So I feel like that should also be like not a luxury. It's kind of important. And you shouldn't have to work to be able to get that much. You can work to get more than that, but like that much should be just a given. This has been my 2022 mess of a recap. Was, were the conservatives okay this year? No, they absolutely weren't. Will they be okay next year? Hit subscribe to find out. I think we all know the answer, but hit subscribe anyway, because I'm great. <laughs> I am here two times a week and I would love to see you here during that time. Um, so yeah, 
A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons, whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons, Wolf, Toulouse, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Ida, Queer Cory, Cory Go Lightly, Cosmic Octopus, Danielle, Mick McKenna Anna, and Raven. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If you would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash savvycat or click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get a whole bunch of other stuff like outtakes, uh, vlogs, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, etc. I appreciate all of the support. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, happy New Year! <laughs> Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah.